And uh, thank you very much, Doug, uh, for organizing the online meeting. Uh, uh, my topic is uh, camera related activities we joined in, in this year and diversified development of the camo industry. Uh, my, my name is Suru Hasi and uh, Agricultural University. And uh, I'm also working as the uh, chairman of a uh, camera protection association in Mongolia. Uh, firstly, I talk uh, about uh, the activities we joined in this year. First one is uh, the fifth uh, conference. Uh, this uh, topic is the recent advance in candidate biology, health, and production. Uh, there are about uh, 300 particip participants from uh, 35 countries, where uh, totally 216 reports with uh, 13 keynote reports and uh, 203 sub venue reports. Uh, this is the meeting we visited the camel farmers in Morocco. And then we also attended the, another conference in Morocco. Uh, Professor Hasmi It looks like we might be having some technical difficulties with Dr. Sarong. Uh, looks like he's trying to get back on. Yeah, yeah, it looks like Dr. Sarong is logging back on. We appreciate everybody's patience with this. Uh, I think you can probably understand. I... Yes, sir, we can hear you. Uh, did you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you fine. We only need your video, please. Yeah. Uh, some problem. Yes, sir. It appears you might have a weak connection. Uh, there we are. Yes, sir. We can see you and hear you. You can continue sharing your screen, maybe, and pick up your presentation on the slide you left with. Share, share the screen. Atos. Yes, sir. Sharing screen.
Can you see the screen now? No, sir, not yet. Not yet? No, uh, sir. Would you send me the signals again? Would you invite me again? Yeah, you still have all controls. So you should be able to click on the green share screen and then click on the PowerPoint you need. We, we cannot find the green. Firstly, with me again. Uh, you should find it at the bottom of your screen, right in the middle. He logged off. He's trying to log in again. We appreciate everybody's patience again over multiple time zones and uh, numerous countries. I think we've had a successful day as far as technology goes so far. Yes, sir, we have you. Now you can see the sc uh, screen. Yes, yes, sir, perfectly. Yeah. Continue. Uh, yes, uh, after the uh, ISO card meeting, we were uh, invited by the Professor Kasmi and uh, participate another conference in Morocco. Uh, in uh, uh, Hassan to Casablanca University. Uh, uh, Professor Jerome to and me. And uh, the conference on the impact of uh, climate and environment change on animal production, advantages, constraints, and the perspectives in, in the camel. Uh, this is the second uh, uh, conference in Morocco. Uh, this one is the uh, third ASO card conference, uh, fourth ASO card conference in uh, Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan 2015. There are about 200 participants from more than 30 countries were attended. After the conference, we, uh, in, during the conference, we had uh, uh, communication with the uh, uh, communication with the uh, uh, camel expert, and uh, after the conference, we also in, uh, uh, visited the camel farm in the, in the uh, Kazakhstan. Uh, other international conferences we attended this year. First one is the camel culture, historical traditions, uh, present threats, and the future prospects, uh, held in 2017 in School of Orient, or, Oriental and uh, African U Studies, University of London. Uh, more than 30 particip participants from 10 countries participated in this conference. Uh, second cabinet workshop at the Plant and Animal Geno Genomes uh, 25th conference uh, in 2017. In San Diego, uh, there are uh, about 33 participants from uh, 22 institutions in the world. world. And the uh, seventh uh, international veterinary conference in Paris, uh, 2017, and the 11th international Con veterinary conference in 2018 in Berlin. And in that conference, uh, Dr. Gehlert also attended. And uh, then 
In 2018, we visited the, uh, Saudi Arabia, invited by Dr. Faisal, the director of the Camo uh, Research Center of uh, King Faisal University in Saudi Arabia. We visited Saudi Arabia from April 29th to May 3rd. Uh, first, uh, firstly, we uh, visited the Camel Research Center and the Camel Breeding Base in uh, Faisal University. Uh, uh, we talked with uh, Dr. Faisal and uh, his group in the Camel Research Center and also visited uh, uh, his uh, Camel Breeding Base. Uh, and the camel milk product factory, uh, uh, very small camel milk, uh, milk product factory in uh, camel research center. And then we visited the College of the Veterinary Medicine in Faisal University. And the talk with the cooperation with, with our corporate future about the camel research and uh, the veterinary hospital in Faisal University. Uh, and then we visited the farm, uh, camel farm and the camel milk factory. The camel farm are belong to the Ministry of uh, Environment, Water and uh, Agriculture in Saudi Arabia. Uh, and it's a camel milk factory. Uh, and then, we are also meeting with uh, Dr. Mohammed, the president of uh, King Faisal University, and we also signed uh, sign a signature, uh, sign a signature of uh, memorandum of cooperation and uh, exchange between King Faisal University in Saudi Arabia and Inner Mongolia Institute of Camel Research. Uh, this is the the activities we joined in recent years. And we uh, mainly talk about the diversified development of the camel industry. Uh, first one is the further research on camel milk and the development of diversified products. Uh, the Ruin Yagel, we invited the Ruin Yagel, Professor Yuni Yagel, in 2014. Uh, he said, traditionally seen as riding and pet animals, camels are hugely underestimated and underexploited for their milk, even though camel milk is the most suitable for human uh, consumption after mother's milk. So, in recent years, many researchers uh, re uh, study the camel milk. Uh, a study on the camel milk nutrients, uh, camel milk uh, activity components, and the uh, camel milk uh, uh, other effects of the camel milk. Uh, in in China, we have a now we, we now have three major uh, big uh, camel milk factories. First one, one is the Xinjiang Wangyuan Camel Milk Industry. Industry. Uh, the industry produces a lot of uh, camel products. For example, uh, fresh camel milk, uh, camel milk, uh, milk uh, powder, uh, camel milk, milk uh, tablets. The research on camel, healthy effects of camel milk and the activity components of uh, camel milk and uh, develop high end camel milk products such as cosmetics and the application of heavy gene antibodies in the field of medicine. The uh, camel heavy chain antibody is a special one. Uh, we can use it uh, on the, uh, in the field of the medicine. This one is uh, uh, another camel milk factory in Mongolia, Desert Gobi, uh, Desert God Biotechnology Company Limited. Uh, this company is lo located in the uh, in the inner Mongolia. Uh, 
2017, we organized the international conference in uh, Riot Alasha, uh, this company located in the Riot Alasha. Now, uh, they uh, produce, uh, produce many kinds of uh, camel milk products. For example, uh, fresh milk, uh, milk powder, uh, and the milk tablet, and the uh, soup uh, made by the camel milk. This one is another factory in uh, Inner Mongolia, Sunit, Sunit Camel Biotechnology Company Limited. This is located in uh, Inner Mon uh, Shilin Shilingol, uh, Inner Mongolia. Uh, this one is the young, youngest factory in Inner Mongolia. But now we produce uh, many kinds of uh, uh, camel milk products, also uh, fresh milk. Uh, milk powder, and so on. Uh, this uh, kind of milk uh, cosmetics, some of us uh, from other countries, from Mongolia and uh, from other countries. Uh, kind of milk cosmetics, uh, kind of milk soap, and the kind of milk chocolate. This is from Saudi Arabia. And this one is uh, uh, camel milk cosmetic developed by our institute, our Inner Mongolia Camel Research Institute. We have now eleven kind of eleven kind this kind of uh, eleven uh, kind of uh, cosmetics uh, made by the camel milk and the camel fat. Uh, this is about the camel milk. And then we continue to talk about uh, camel wool products. Uh, camel wool has a very uh, uh, good characteristics, has good warmth and the anti ultraviolet rays. Uh, we studied uh, uh, camel wool's final, final uh, microstructure. Microstructure. The camel wool's microstructure ha has a hollow, hollow structure. It's uh, resistant to uh, keep the warm, keep the warmth. And we also studied the uh, camel who's the anti, uh, uh, anti ultraviolet uh, capacities. Uh, this, you, you see these, these pictures, these uh, pictures. This uh, first one, the yellow one is uh, 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 the two. Uh, uh, yellow one is the Chumyan, how to say Chumyan. Uh, uh, made by, uh, I, I, can't, I can't say it in English. Uh, uh, below, blue one, blue one is the camel milk. Uh, the, the, the sweater is made by the uh, camel uh, final. It's a uh, the out out translate trans uh, the uh, out violet is cannot uh, trans transmittance with the uh, with the uh, with it. So uh, the camel uh, camel final can has the anti uh, out violet trees. Uh, Bactrian camel has a heavy uh, wools, especially in the winter time. You can see this uh, uh, video. So we can use the uh, camel, camel wool made a lot of uh, products such as uh, uh, sweaters, coats, uh, quilts, and uh, scarf, etc. Uh, all of these are very good products. And also uh, use, use the camel harsh, harsh wool, can made, it, made the, the ropes uh, used in the uh, everyday life, and the carpets. This uh, is about the camel wool. 
and then camel meat uh, products. Uh, you know, in uh, 2017, the professor Asma Kitma uh, Kad Kadim uh, gave a presentation about the camel meat. Uh, he said, camel meat has the characteristics of a high protein, low fat, and low cholesterol. It is rich in amino acids, uh, minerals, and uh, unsaturated uh, fatty acids. Camel meat has a lot of uh, characteristics. Uh, for example, camel meat, uh, uh, camel meat can relieve seasonal fever and sciatica. Camel broth can be used to treat corneal opacity and enhance vision. Hump fat can be, can be used to, to repel tip worms in animals. Low cholesterol content reduces the risk of cardiovascular disease, and uh, camel meat, uh, meat can relieve fatigue, etc. So camel meat is very good meat for, uh, for consumption. This is a uh, comparison of the camel meat cholesterol content in different kind of animals. The cholesterol content in the camel meat is very low. Uh, from 50 to 61, but uh, the, the cholesterol content in the, in the pig meat is very high, 68 uh, milligram per 100 gram meat, fermentation of camel meat. And we have a lot of kind of camel meat products. Uh, for example, this ham sausage and uh, a lot of product. This is from the Saudi Arabia. And then development and the application of a chemical theorem. High added content, especially the IgG content in clostrum is uh, very high, and half of it is uh, uh, heavy chain and uh, IgG, heavy chain and IgG. This, uh, from this picture, we can see the uh, left one is the whole IgG, and the middle one is the heavy chain IgG, uh, and the right one is the nano nano antibody. Uh, Mr. Third. Uh, from the uni uh, uh, free universe of the Brussels, uh, studied the camel, uh, camel heavy chain antibody for a long time. In, in China, the academician Shen Jianzhong, the professor from University of Pharmacology, China Agricultural University, using camel heavy chain antibody to study the drug residues in animal originated food. Uh, next one is the uh, effective use of a uh, camel bone. Uh, camel bone is a large bone, so uh, many of the artists, artists used the camel bone, uh, made a lot of uh, utensils. For example, uh, this, this bone is the camel shoulder blade. Shoulder blade. Someone uh, uh, carved 70, 70 horsemen on the camel shoulder belly, which are given to the 70th, 17th anniversary of the Inner Mongolia uh, Autonomous Region. This bone is now stored in the museum. And we used uh, the camel bone made the snuff bottle, snuff bottle. This one is uh, traditionally used by Mongolian people when meeting each other. And we also use the camel bone made the pen holder, uh, different kind of pen holder. Uh, and then we uh, give a brief introduction of our Mongolian traditional Kamunadam. Kamunadam. Uh, Kamunadam 
is organized every year in different places, and sometimes it organized in the late autumn, and sometimes organized in the winter time. Winter. In the opening ceremony, uh, at the opening ceremony of the Camel Nadam, there are admission uh, ceremonies, fashion shows, counter performance. For example, uh, first one is the admission of Camel Riding King in the Camel Nadam, Caravan. And uh, we also gathered a lot of camels in the Camel Nadam. Uh, in 2012, we gathered 10,000 camels in one place. And the camel men in national costumes and the majestic camels. Uh, and uh, we also have a theatrical performances in Camel Nada. Uh, and uh, almost everyone could on their traditional national costumes to participate the Camel Nadam. This naturally becomes a fashion show in the, during the Camel, uh, camel show. Uh, this one is uh, my wife and me. Uh, all of, almost all of people, Mongolian people, uh, put, up, put on the traditional uh, national costumes during the uh, Nadam. Uh, second one is the Camel Racing Competition during the Camel Nadam. One of the most important events of the Camel Adam is the uh, Camel Racing. We have different distances and the different types of uh, Camel Racing. Camel, camel long distance field racing of uh, 30 kilometers, 20 kilometers, and uh, 15 kilometers. And we also have Camel Track Racing of uh, 1,000 meters, 3,000 meters. We have the different uh, Distance of uh, distance of uh, and different types of camel racing during the camel uh, nadam, and we also have uh, the camel polo. Camel polo sometimes it uh, held uh, in in late autumn, and sometimes it's held uh, in winter. Uh, this one uh, during the snow time. We also organized the Camel Polo. Uh, Camel Polo. And uh, then Camel Beauty Contest. Camel Beauty Contest. Uh, both the camels and their owners need decorations uh, and the, uh, joined the uh, Camel Beauty Contest. Uh, first one showed the, the Camel owners dressed to put on their traditional Mongolian uh, cost, costumes and they also decorated their camels. And we also uh, selected the beauty, beauty too. How to say beauty too? Uh, this one is a, a family. Uh, they joined the con uh, contest. Uh, this is a winner at the traditional Camel Nadam in South Gobi province in 2010. This is uh, from Mongolia, from Mongolia. And during the Camel Nadam, we also have a Camel Utensil Making Competition. For example, making the nose peg, like this nose peg, uh, and uh, twisting the ropes, like this. This is uh, we usually used in uh, camels. And uh, uh, most majestic bull camel selection. Uh, during the camel autumn, we gathered uh, a lot of uh, bull camels and uh, uh, select uh, the most majestic bull camels. And the camel tourism. Camel tourism, uh, in terms of camel tourism, I think we, did, we are not doing well because uh, I think it is not well connected with uh, our culture and uh, our history. But I think it has a good prospects 
In this terms, I think uh, Mr. Uh, Dark does a very good job on camel tourism. So we should do study, uh, learn from the Dark, his experience, and uh, we uh, plan to develop the camel. Different uh, places. It's a. Uh, I think it's a tourism in desert area. Yeah. But uh, it's not well uh, well connected with the culture and the history. So just uh, uh, only ride a camel to uh, go everywhere. Uh, this is my last slide. Uh, the development of uh, development prospects of camel technology and industry. I think uh, we should do uh, we have to first one is a uh, second one is a uh, study on the mechanism of the unique biological characteristics of bacteria and camels and the risks and development of camel feed to study the camel disease in, in China. Uh, and then development and research on high-end products of uh, bacteria and camels and the extensive development of actual camel tourism and propaganda and the development of Mongolian traditional camel culture and others. So I think uh, we have a lot of things to do on camels. Uh, uh, this is my uh, uh, presentation. My English is not good. So uh, we show it uh, with the, by the pictures, uh, photos. Uh, thank you. Dr. Sarong, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Um, you have the, the greatest uh, difference in time from where we are hosting this Zoom meeting uh, to a presenter. So with 13 hours, we know that you have adjusted your schedule, uh, stayed up very late last night to test the technology, and you've gotten up very early this morning, uh, China time, to join us. There is one question that we received in the chat box. Uh, somebody uh, from the US has uh, mentioned that the nose peg is not common in America, uh, but clearly in the Mongolian culture, it is um, tradition and a part of, uh, as you said, the utensils for working with camels. Can you talk a little bit about the benefit of the nose peg, its importance to Mongolian culture with camels. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, nose peg, uh, to, uh, do, do you know Tom, Tom from uh, UK, Tom? Tom wrote, uh, wrote uh, a paper about the nose peg very long, long paper about nose peg. In, yeah, the, in, the, in the Mongolia, why we, we use uh, nose peg? Because, uh, yes, in the, in, the, in, the, in the Mongolia, the bacteria and camels, uh, uh, most of the bacteria and camels uh, live in the uh, semi-wild uh, state. So, uh, uh, not, uh, uh, not very friendly with the people. So uh, if you use the nose peg, you can fix the camels, easily to fix the camels. Uh, because camels are very big, big animals. Uh, if you not use the uh, nose peg, you cannot control the camels easily. Uh, that's a, a, a perfect answer. I've, I've seen the, uh, the management system for Bactrian and camels in Inner Mongolia province, and as you described it, uh, the camels live in a semi-wild state. They're um, kind of like cattle in Texas. Uh, they're, they're not necessarily trained or 
all used for working. So the practical benefits of the nose peg uh, does seem obvious. And the, the person who asked that question said, thank you and um, much appreciated. Uh, so wrong as we uh, prepare to finish here and wrap things up, I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit about the status of the camel in Inner Mongolia. Uh, what kind of population uh, do you see, and is it on the rise or is it on the decline? Uh, yeah, camel, about the camel population. Yes, we have a uh, uh, now the camel population is rise uh, gradually. In uh, in uh, in two, uh, 19, 1982, we have uh, uh, most population camels in in uh, China. It's about uh, uh, 60, uh, 600,000 camels in China. But it uh, uh, decreased to the uh, 250,000 camels in, in China in 2000, about 2002. It's uh, very quickly decreased, but now it rise to the 400 camels, about 400 camels in China. Because we developed a lot of uh, camel industry and mm -hmm. make, uh, made a lot of uh, money. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, business opportunities and development. Um, are you finding that the, the people who are breeding camels and increasing their numbers, are they uh, coming to this strictly from a business standpoint or are they um, ethnic Mongol and um, they, they come to it as well from uh, a sense of tradition or maybe it's a a mixture of the two. Uh, yes, uh, the Mongolian people like the camels. It's the one reason. But uh, uh, we we studied a lot of uh, we do a lot of studies about on the camels. For example, the benefit effect of the camel milk and the camel meat, camel wool. So now people in China we uh, uh, recognized again the camels uh, importance. Uh, important uh, important aspect uh, especially the camel milk uh, we, 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 we think uh, camel milk is a benefit to your healthy have a lot of uh, active components uh, contained in the camel milk so many many people uh, now recognize the camel milk and uh, build the, a lot of uh, three, three big camel milk factories uh, so, uh, if they want to produce the camel milk, uh, the Mongolian camel herdsmen uh, must uh, raise the camel, camels, bacteria camels, and they milk the camels. So, the number is increased uh, quickly in recent years. This is very encouraging. We like to hear that those numbers are on the increase and that the camel is uh, making a, a stronger economic impact. Yeah, yeah, We've yeah. got uh, a couple more questions here. Um, Brandy Rubeck of the US asks, with the rise in interest in camels in your region, has there also been increased awareness and interest in protecting the wild camel? populations of China, Camellus uh, ferus versus Camellus bactrianus. Is there uh, increased interest in the protection of the endangered camel, the wild camel? Uh, yes, yes. We have a wild cam camel protection area in China, especially in Xinjiang, wild camel protection area. And we, uh, every year, we put a lot of money to protect the wild camels. Uh, but uh, wild camels, how many wild camels uh, in China? There is no clear number. Uh, we guess about the uh, 60, 100 to 800 uh, wild camels. Uh, I don't know, no clear number, but uh, we did a lot of work on the, uh, on, to, to protect the wild camels in China. 
I think uh, a good step toward that is the, the creation of protected areas, which uh, definitely uh, the Chinese government and uh, the Mongolian government have cooperated on. Uh, the last question comes from our colleague from Sudan, Dr. Ahmed Isa al Haag, and I think he's, um, he's pushing you a little bit here. Um, he, he says he enjoyed your presentation, and he wants to know if you have plans to host the next ISOCARD conference, and what month in uh, 2021 will it be? <laughs> yes, yes, we, we, we submit our, our invite, uh, application forum to the ISOCARD executive, executive committee, but uh, because of the uh, uh, COVID-19, we didn't know it's a very serious problem in China. So I worry about the disease. <laughs> sure, sure. Ahmed, you'll just have to be patient. Dr. Surong, you have just been so wonderful to accommodate our schedule across so many time zones. And I can't think of a better way to finish our day of presentations and our third and final session. Um, please give uh, all of our best to your family and the colleagues there in the Alasha League and Inner Mongolia province. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Doug. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. All right, we everybody. Each other by, by email. We're, we're, we're so lucky to have the technology. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for giving so much of your time today. Uh, we recognize that the schedule wasn't particularly convenient for everybody around the world. Um, but those of us here with the Southwest Camel Conference and Training Clinic were determined to somehow this year uh, bring this event to life, both with our uh, three-day clinic trek, which concluded over the weekend for U.S. camel owners out in the desert of West Texas along the Mexican border, and then uh, as well with today's free Zoom presentations. We hope you found each pr uh, presenter engaging and their presentations helpful, uh, hopefully enlightening in some way. And uh, just a final reminder that all three sessions have been recorded and over uh, the, the short term, we will have those uh, bundled together into uh, one video presentation that we will make available to everyone, perhaps on YouTube or uh, some other internet platform. But for sure, uh, all of them will be uh, put together and packaged for everyone to see. Uh, and that too will be free, just like our day of Zoom presentation. So um, from all of us at the Southwest Camel Conference and Training Clinic, thank you again for your time and your energy, those of you who watched, and of course the time and energy from all of our participants. Thank you all, and we'll see you soon. See you, see you.